What's up, my friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to SR Lounge. If you're new to this channel, this is your place for no-nonsense photography, some, some nonsense photography education. And we're going to go ahead and dive straight in. And I'm just going to say it. You're lazy. You're la Do you know how I know you're lazy? Because I'm lazy. Well, let's not use the L word. We're efficient. So I want to show you guys how to efficiently dodge and burn directly inside of Lightroom. And I'm going to break this video out into three specific parts. First, we're going to dive straight into the actual technique of localized dodging and burning so you guys kind of understand how it works. Second, we're going to go over and kind of talk a little bit more about dark mode editing, get a preset there. Third, we're going to do a final edit of this image. And while I'm mentioning this image, you guys can download this exercise file at the link in the description of the video. So do that now. All right, so this image is of my two children at the time and Trevor Daly's six children at the time. He now has 16. Complete fabrication, he still has six. First, I wanna teach you guys the first basic technique of just dodging and burning inside of Lightroom. So this is part one. What I want the background of this image to look like is, well, I want it to be deeper and darker. And look, yes, we could have added a flash, we could have done all that, but that's to say that you had a flash with you and all that. You can do this natural light and there's tons of benefits to it. That's beyond this video. But where the background is now is where I want it to be. But you'll notice that the skin tones are dark. So what I'm going to do is bring up my adjustment brush. And when most of us think of kind of just a dodge brush, we kind of just raise exposure. And I'm just going to go to plus one, OK? And then what we typically do is just kind of fill it in where we would like. I'm going to turn the flow all the way up. And we're just going to paint this over the faces. And here we kind of bring back the skin to that original exposure value, right? That plus one value. So I'm going to paint this over everything. And this is where you're probably going, well, Pi, that would be, you know, like a really good job for somebody um, who's drunk and can't control uh, a mouse effectively. I understand. I'm, I'm not a surgeon. Um, I'm a, a Lightroom person and a photographer. Okay. I don't have the steadiest of hands. It's fine. But look, I'm kind of okay with this being a, a messy painting job because of this next technique that you're going to see. So inside of Photoshop, we have blend if, right? Well, inside of Lightroom, in recent versions, we have the range mask function, which is Lightroom's blend if. And what that means is if we select color or luminance or depth, we can choose to blend a particular effect based on what's underneath that effect, okay? So what this essentially means with luminance is if I click show luminance mask, just so we can see what's happening, what's going to happen is as I pull up on my range, it's not going to blend anything that's in this shadow range. And as I pull it up higher and higher, you'll see that it retains more and more of the shadows. If I pull down anything from the highlight side, then it starts pulling it off skin and only leaves the adjustment in the shadows. So now I'm going to turn this off because from this point, I'm just going to raise the range to kind of pull the dodging effect off of hair and everything else. Okay, so that looks actually pretty decent. And you'll notice that it actually does a good job of controlling it along the hair as well as other background elements. The other thing we're gonna do is raise the smoothness. Smoothness is kind of the, the roughness or the feathering of the transition. I usually like to keep this a little bit higher. So that way it's just a little bit more of a subtle effect. And even if you paint a little bit sloppily, you know, a little bit drunken-like, drunken drunkenly, then it's going to look totally fine. Okay, so this is technique number one, is kind of utilizing the mask in conjunction with whatever effect that you're painting. Now let's go ahead and do this. Let's go to part two because I want to show you now kind of dark mode. And, and by the way, um, we don't yet have a setting that I want you guys to save yet. I'm going to show you in just one second. So I'm going to press Control-Shift-R or Command-Shift-R, and we're going to create a virtual copy of this image. And now I'm going to show you dark mode. Okay, so dark mode, we have a complete separate video for this. I'd recommend you guys check it out. Oh, 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 speaking of dark, darkness. Oh, look at this transition. That was like the most amazing transition. This is my cousin's new book. This is the third book in our series, Dark Corners of the Night. If you like detective novels, she's amazing. If you like detective novels and, and it's just incredible. In fact, it actually just got optioned as an Amazon series. So I'm hoping that... I'm, I'm a proud cousin. Okay. So anyway, back to dark mode, not, not into the dark corners of the night. Back to dark mode. 
So what I'm going to do is from the retouching toolkit, the visual flow retouching toolkit, I'm going to select dark mode. You don't need to have the retouching toolkit. Okay. I just want to show you uh, how it works and I'm going to actually have you save this out as a preset for yourself. So what I'm going to do is select dark mode. What happens here is it reverses everything in the image. So you'll notice that it pulls exposure down. It raises highlights. It keeps whites where it's at and it puts shadows up just a little bit. Okay. So if we compare to this to the previous image, you'll notice that the background elements have this richness and darkness to them that looks really cool. It has this kind of great painterly vibe to it. Okay. Um, maybe we should have called it that like painterly vibe mode. I don't know. So what I want you guys to do is actually save this out as a preset. So what you're going to do is go up to the top, press add new preset, create preset, call it whatever you like, and just select basic tone options. So press check none, basic tone only. And yeah, you can choose the process version. Give it a name, save it out as your dark mode. So this is essentially the exact opposite way that we would be developing, right? But what we need to do with dark mode now is clearly we need to reveal the skin, right? We need to actually paint our subjects out of the scene. This is where I'm going to get you guys two extra brushes. But now that you have dark mode saved, I want you to do one other thing. I want you to pick your favorite preset, choose a look, just dial in a look, a color setting for the image, right? Choose your HSL, choose your look. Okay. What I'm going to do is select from the visual flow pack soft light. What this does is it dials in the soft light look. Okay. So this is soft light, right? So it basically finishes the image It applies this overall warmth and look to the image. It doesn't matter what preset you choose. It doesn't matter what look options you select down here. All you're going to do is do that first and then select dark mode. And the reason why was because I had you guys save dark mode settings just under basic tones. So that way it doesn't override the color settings of your preset. So essentially you get the darkened version of whatever preset you like in this dark mode setting. Now we're going to develop from this point. So this is part three where we're going to start with this baseline and we're going to develop to our final image. And I'm going to show you guys a couple other brush presets along the way. Okay. So at this point, what I'm going to do is go ahead and raise my exposure to a place where actually, you know what? I kind of like it. The darkness around everything is good. Um, all I'm going to do is lift the shadows just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and just bring the highlight point a little bit up. And I'm going to bring the white point a little bit down just to preserve kind of the, the uh, white of the clothing. Just be careful of whites of the clothing. It can kind of get a little bit over the top. Okay, so now we're going to select the adjustment brushes. And what you'll see here is this is the full visual flow retouching toolkit. This is a complete toolkit that's organized by workflow on essentially not only does it teach you how to retouch, but it's literally every setting for retouching your portraits right inside of Lightroom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is select quick dodge and lift. And if you don't have the collection, that's totally fine. At the end of this video, you can decide if it's something you'd like. If not, I, I want you to walk away with, with all the knowledge and all the tools. So with this selected, I want you to dial in the following settings. Your exposure is up to 0.5, your contrast is down to negative 10, your highlights are up, your shadows are up, your whites are at negative 10. What is happening here is this is a statistical adjustment to change exposure values while retaining the underlying color of an area. Okay. So the beauty in this and dial in your clarity and your saturation is what we're going to do is paint this actually right over all the children and their faces. We're going to paint it all over our subjects. Okay. And you'll notice it kind of lifts everything out and it's fairly subtle. So yeah, you can be a little bit loose with the way that it's applied. Okay. Just go right over here, right over here. Right over Caitlin. We're going to hit Ethan. We can't forget. We got cash here at the end. We got to get cash. All right. It's a pretty sloppy job, but let's press O just so we can look at our mask. Make sure we fix anything that's kind of glaring issues, making sure that we get all the legs, everything, and we can refine this in just a moment. Okay. So just make sure everything is covered. So the beauty in this is that with these settings, this is what I mean by it being statistical. I can hold alter option, click and drag to the right. And you'll notice it brightens everything in the image while retaining the same color. Do you see how all the adjustments are? Yeah, this is the crazy math that we put into this software behind the scenes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And now you have it as a preset. So just save it out. Okay. So I can adjust it up just a bit and I like it right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to refine a little bit by using that same technique. We're going to go to luminance. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off of anything that's extremely white. And what's extremely white? Those clothing items, right? So all I wanna do is just pull it down to like 98 or 99, okay? If you can't, uh, it doesn't let us actually dial in the number. So just bring it over there and just kind of get it down to like 98-ish, okay? That looks great. Now I can pull this up a little bit more. This is looking good right there. And I'm gonna also, if I'd like, I can lift it off the shadows, but you know what? I'm gonna leave it on the shadows because I do want some of the shadows to be, to be a little bit brightened. So for right now, leave it on the shadows. I'm gonna turn the smoothness a little bit on just so we get a slightly more subtle effect. And now from here, holding Alter Option, you can actually leave the auto mask on this time. So with the eraser brush, using the auto mask against a background that's kind of blurred out, it helps to kind of, it'll help you to refine the edge a little bit. And now like with my drunken mouse movements, I can actually go over and still refine this in a pretty good way, okay? And it does a pretty good job of that. Um, if you're if you're comfortable, or if you're just not, you know, drunk, um, then you can turn off that mask and just kind of keep going with it. But it doesn't have to be perfect and precise, as long as it's uh, you know close. The effect is on the subtle side, and that's why we kind of keep it on that side. We're just gonna kind of paint it off. Like I noticed that when I was up here painting on on the heads, I kind of got a lot of the background. So I'm just gonna kind of fix that. That's probably the more noticeable area is the the backgrounds up here. Okay, so I might just jump right down by baby's face. All right, got Annabelle, she's good. All right, so looking at the mask now, it's it's far better, right? We're good, but you'll still notice that there's a little bit of depth on the faces that, that I wanna bring out that we don't quite see yet. This is where we're gonna get to the second brush you're now gonna save, because watch this. Under the retouching toolkit, we have dodge and burns for specific highlight tones and what I want you to select is whites if you have the kit if you don't have the kit pause dial in plus 20 highlights and plus 20 whites because now I can actually go and paint this right over a face and only brighten highlight values this is nutso this is why I want you to share this video because people have no idea that you can make these types of adjustments inside of Lightroom and all I'm gonna do is paint it right over the faces I'm gonna go over the arms a little bit separate just to keep the arms a little bit more controlled, but you'll see that all it's doing is brightening the highlight tones on those faces. Now, I can kind of adjust it down a little bit by holding Alter Option. I'm gonna pull it down just a bit. Okay, actually, it's pretty good where it's at. Oh, we missed Ellie. Oh, can't miss Ellie. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn on the range mask, Luminance, and we're gonna go ahead and just take this off of the shadows, and we're gonna give it a good blend and it's looking really, really nice right here. So now I'm just gonna adjust it down a tiny, tiny bit, because what I'm gonna do is add another layer for people that are a little bit darker. Like it looks like we have some people standing in kind of shadows, and so we're just gonna brighten those individuals a little bit more, get a little bit of the areas of the skin where it might've gotten a little bit dark. And if you want, you can turn the flow down so you can kind of click one click at a time and kind of just slowly adjust up, okay? This is starting to actually look really, really nice. Now all I need to do is just add one more new one and we're gonna do this over kind of skin tones and just make sure that our skin is a little bit brighter. Now there's a there's an even more precise way of dodging and burning and we'll do that in a, in a separate video. Uh, more targeted, more, more refined for those that wanna actually do like Lightroom retouch. But we'll save that one. Okay, get a little bit of hand. All right, and that's looking pretty cool. Now I'll let you guys further refine from here, but all I'm gonna do now is add on one last radial burn onto the entire image, and we're gonna go ahead and just leave it right in the middle. I'm gonna bring the exposure on this radial burn down just a bit, and what you can do from a radial burn is click brush again, and now hold down alter option, and you can basically just remove it from areas of, of skin, right? So kind of just removing it from the center if you want. Um, you can also kind of expand out the brush if you want, but we can kind of just make sure that the, the inside area of this is not as much affected as the outside area, okay? And I'm gonna pull this back just a little bit. Okay, so that's it. And now this is where I would make my final adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial back the contrast just a little bit. I'm gonna pull the highlights maybe down just a smidge, okay? And I'm gonna fix Caitlin's highlight too and 
and it looks like they have a little bit of like their brightness kind of levels. So make sure that your brightness levels are good. But this is the place where you dial in your final white balance. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna kind of create this like nice and warm image. And I'm gonna let you guys go and refine this further. It's hard to refine it when I have a light in my face. I'm gonna go and do mine now. But check this out. From this image, we go to this image. We get this dark and beautiful burn portrait with just a natural light image right here inside of Lightroom. So I'm hoping you enjoyed this. You guys should be walking away with three presets of your own, dark mode, as well as the general quick dodge and burn, as well as, or quick dodge and lift, as well as the dodge white preset, okay? In addition, if you guys are interested in learning more about visual flow presets, well, these are development tools unlike anything else out there. Guys, thousands of photographers have already jumped into this and yes, they're completely different than any other presets that are out there. That's why we hesitate calling them presets because it's really software for Lightroom. Be sure to check that out. Also, for more of the best education on Lightroom, on shooting, on weddings, on business, on making your own seven-figure portrait business, we have a proven manual of education on srloungeworkshops.com. So be sure to check that out as well. In the meanwhile, I hope you guys like the video. Please subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, leave a comment in this video on what you guys would like to see next. I'm gonna go and finalize out this image and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.